I'm here today to say to this government, this is not fair. These are real tears. These closures will put veterans at risk. I hope the government is listening. Why do we, as veterans, have to beg? And the saying, they grow not old as we're left to grow old, age will not wear them, and they're going down to the sun, we will remember them. I just hope the government remembers the living. The Union of Public Employees joining veterans in opposing the closing, uh, closure rather, of regional offices. The, the group will meet with Veterans Affairs Minister Julian Fantino later today. It's part of a uh, sense of strong protest right across the country. CTV's Mercedes Stevenson joins us now. So, Mercedes, speaking of the veterans being at risk with the closure of these regional offices, so give us a, a sense of w the importance of these regional offices that have the veterans so upset. Well, Sandy, eight regional offices that are scheduled to close this coming Friday, and that's what the veterans are protesting, offices that they say are dedicated to providing them with the services they need as veterans, both young and old. And I want to play for you what one veteran had to say, and it's quite surprising. He tells the government in this clip, Sandy, that he is a conservative, but he's putting them on notice over their treatment of vets. What I'm about to say, I've said many times, uh, always hoping that someone in government would, uh, would listen. I am true blue through and through. Uh, I've always been a conservative ever since my dad told me uh, how well Mr. Bob Muir looked after his constituents. But I am here today to put the government on notice, and I mean put them on notice. Please listen to what we veterans have to say, and please listen to all our supporters as well. Listen to the workers, the town council, the mayors, the citizens themselves. They've spoken out, and we're always saying, close these offices, we'll betray our veterans. Not being heard by Mr. Fantino. And if these closures go ahead, these veterans standing with me today, and thousands like them across Canada, will organize to hold this government accountable when Canada goes for their next election. The key question, Mercedes, is the government listening? Has there been anything in response to this? Well, the Veterans Affairs Minister has agreed to meet with these veterans at 5 p.m. today, but their position doesn't seem to have moved, Sandy. Uh, take a look at some of the information that they sent to me. We have some graphics here that they say prove that there will, in fact, be more locations able to serve veterans. And they note the changing demographic of those veterans. Uh, many younger veterans, as you can see in these graphs, who are now needing the services at hand. But some of those younger veterans were at this press conference today, including one man who lost 5% of his brain after he was injured in Afghanistan. They are saying that if these offices move, they will have more difficulty getting to them. They will have more difficulty being served in the way that they need. And because of physical uh, as well as psychological injuries that they have sustained in battle, sometimes travel can be very difficult. The government tells me that they will have one person at the local Service Canada office, Sandy, uh, and that that person will take the place of the Veterans Affairs office. The veterans are saying that's simply not enough, but strong words from Julian Fantino that his office stands behind today, and I want to read you part of his quote. He says, contrary to the utterly false and irresponsible claims made recently by the Public Service Alliance of Canada. Veterans Affairs Canada is placing full-time client service agents on an ongoing basis in the nearest Service Canada location. And it says that this position will be filled for as long as necessary. And he also goes on to say that by making these unfounded allegations, the union has once again blatantly put its own interests ahead of the veterans it claims to be protecting. But we certainly heard from some very frustrated and worried veterans there today who are concerned about what this is going to mean for their ability to access services. The recent spate of suicides by Canadian Forces members was also raised in the House of Commons today. NDP leader Tom Mulcair noted that there have been eight in the past two months alone. And he asked the Prime Minister if he would make the growing crisis a personal priority. Obviously, Mr. Speaker, we're concerned about uh, individual cases and express uh, our deep sympathies to those involved. But I think what is, remains very important is that 
our military people should be aware that uh, mental health uh, challenges are very real for people throughout society, including in the military. Supports are there, and we encourage those who need support to come forward. My name is Chris Aylward. I'm the National Executive Vice President for the Public Service Alliance of Canada. We are here today to make one last appeal to this government to listen to our veterans, because our veterans deserve better. I am here today because it is our members who these veterans turn to for face-to-face -face services in Veterans Affairs offices across the country. And our members have stood up and spoken out and said, we cannot let this happen. Our members say that closing these offices will hurt veterans and their families. And so the PSAC has partnered with veterans across the country to try and convince this government not to close these offices. And now it isn't just veterans or our members who are speaking out, but mayors, municipal councils, school children, and editorial boards, and people like the more than 3,000 who marched in Sydney, Nova Scotia on November 9th. Let's hope that this government will do the right thing. We learned late yesterday evening that Minister Fantino will meet with the veterans later this evening. Let's hope they are heard.